Good afternoon class. In today's video, what I'd like to do is to go over the Lorentz transformation. And so the first question I'm sure you're all asking is, what is a transformation and why is it the Lorentz transformation? So the way to think about it is kind of like what we did with time dilation um, in our first series on, in special relativity, where we had the two perspectives. One was uh, you on Earth and what you see and what the what the rocket ship show if you're on a rocket ship and you're and you're moving um, if you will recall the light clock that we did in the last video um, you saw you were on the rocket ship so you saw the photon going up and down like this but on earth they would have seen this motion like a sawtooth kind of motion because they're not moving but you on the rocket ship are so your two perspectives are different that's what the Lorentz transformation addresses. And so we're going to use some of that, um, that information from the time dilation video uh, with our gamma function. So gamma will still be 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. So we're going to continue that and we're going to go through how to transform velocity in this exam. In this, in this video we're going to go through um, velocity transformations um, because that will help us to get through a, a bunch of the other transformations that will need to be addressed in order to understand relativity. So let's get into it. Um, with this, we're going to assume that the, that the frame of reference, um, the first one is obviously inertial or it's not moving. So its velocity would be zero. But relative to this frame, this um, frame of reference is moving at a speed of, out of speed v. And it's moving in this, we're going to go with the x direction. Okay, it's only moving in this x direction. It's not moving in the y direction. It's not moving in the z direction, which would be out of or into the board. So we're only going to assume this, but, um, and, that, and so once, we, um, once we've established all of this, if I did need to shift, um, whether you're going in the x direction, the y direction, or the z direction, then it doesn't, you know, I, it, it doesn't matter so much in terms of the math, because all I have to do is shift which variable has all the transformations done to it. So once I've gotten that, um, out of the way in the x direction, the others should be easy enough to follow. So we're only going to assume in this in this video one one change one change in direction, which is the x direction for the moving frame of reference. So in this case, you know, in, and especially because we're trying to match up the basically what we're doing with this Lorentz transformation is we're taking both of these frames of reference and we are going to see what happens. Um, to the physics, and can you see what happens to the physics of it? Can you get what you see in this in this frame of reference, the one on Earth, to match up with the frame of reference that is moving on the spaceship? And in this case, we actually can, or at least we will try our best to do so. Of course, the, just know that the um, that after all of this occurs. Um, the results of this will, will lead to some pretty interesting results afterwards, especially when we do an example problem on how two, how two objects moving towards each other to possibly a head-on head -on collision at percentages of the speed of light that would, that would normally add up to above the speed of light actually turns out to not actually break the speed of light barrier at all. So we'll get to that in future videos, but for today, we're sticking with our velocity transformations. So we're going to call this x prime, um, and we're, because again, that's the um, reference frame that's moving. In the, you know, so we got y primed, x prime. Technically, we have z primed as well, um, but we're not going to worry about the z direction as much in this video. Um, so in the x prime direction, that's going to be based on again, we have it based on a, our gamma function, and it's going to be. And so now, what is this part here? How do I argue this, uh, the existence of these terms? Well, x is obviously the case, right? So we're, we're going to be moving. Um, but we also have to take into account the, that the frame of reference is moving. So it's going to be moving at, so you have to take whatever the x distance, x prime distance that's moved, has to be given by the fact that there's an, a distance that's moved in the x direction of the non-moving frame of reference minus the frame of reference. So minus the, di minus the distance the frame of reference has actually moved in the same time frame. So in this case, that's why we get x minus vt, because the fr frame of reference is moving in the direction v at speed v, and it's going to be moving at, with time t, uh, according, at least according to the inertial frame of reference. 
So that's where, that's where this terminology comes in. And then, of course, what do we do with, um, what about in the y direction? Well, there is no change. So y prime is going to be y, z prime is going to be z. But t prime, that's going to be a little bit different. Because like we saw, time in, this, in the um, moving frame of reference is a little bit different from the one in the inertial frame of reference. So, oh, and also one thing to note, just in case this, I'll use this as an example. So in this normal, in this uh, on Earth inertial reference frame, you saw this function, or you saw this motion. What, but what happens is, if this, was, if this distance was equal to the, how much uh, time, or how much velocity and time took place in this, in this um, moving reference frame, then let's say, so let's say for example, this distance here is one, and it took one second for the, for the particle to go up and down. If you're in this frame of reference where the whole frame of the, the reference frame is actually moving at one meter per second, then the distance of one meter would be canceled out by one meter per second times one second. So you would act, x prime would actually have been zero, which is exactly what you see here. So that's how that can kind of connect. So now let's talk about the time frame. So in the um, the time. In the, moving, in the moving reference, the time is going to be t minus v over c squared times x. Um, that's all, again, to balance out how much time passes in the inertial reference frame versus the moving reference frame. Now, of course, you might say, oh, wait, v over c squared times x. Do those units even work out? And the answer is they do. And that's why I circled that and brought that over and wrote it in blue so that it's a little bit easier to see. Um, so what we find is that after you convert v, c squared, and then x into, its, into their base units, they actually, and you do all of the math, it actually does come out to seconds, so we're good to go. Now, this is the part where I'm going to need a whole other video to explain this, but I also wanted to not just find the results from, from the moving reference frame, but I also wanted to know what the result was in the resting or the inertial reference frame. So that's why I put the inverse functions of x primed and t primed over here. And there is a lot of work. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of work that goes into how to get x and t. Um, but right now, I'm going to assume those results. And I'll put it in another video where I actually derive um, how to go from x primed to x. So I will get to that. But that is in another, that's for another video, because that's a lot of extra work that I have to put in. So now let's talk about the velocity transformations that are going to occur. Um, and one thing that you may want to do is pause the video at any point and just take down, write down these results as best you can, uh, because there are a lot of these results. Um, some of them you can are a little bit easier to find than easier to see than others. I, I recognize that. So you know your job would be just take them down as best you can. Maybe take a screenshot of this and work through that. But let's go through it. We're going to find we're going to define a new velocity um, because it can't be v because that's the velocity that's the speed at which the frame of reference is moving at. So we can't use v for our velocity. So we're going to so traditionally um, physicists would use um, u as the next um, second second place in terms of which variable they would use for for speed or velocity. So. We're going to be doing this in the x direction because these are the ones that are actually the ones that are a little bit more important. So we're going to say um, u of x, or the velocity of some object within the frame, within this inertial frame in the x direction, is going to be delta x over delta t. Looks familiar. Something we've done earlier in this physics course. Um, but we know what this x is because we have that we've we've been given this result over here. So we're going to actually plug in. Um, what x is, which is delta uh, a gamma times delta x prime plus v, t, v t, delta t prime. Again, the deltas kind of just move in there, M not because they have any mathematical function, but they're just to show you that they are the change in something. And then, of course, we do the same thing with delta t, which is gamma over, I mean, gamma times delta t prime plus v over c squared delta x prime. So we plug all of those things in, we substitute all of that, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to see, we're kind of just going with it, seeing where everything is going. Uh, remember, I'm saying let this occur. So we're going to say that this relationship is true. This should help us out in our, um, in our um, simplification of this, of this relationship. 
so what I get was I also I noticed that I can factor out a common factor of delta t prime from both numerator and denominator. And then once I do that, I can actually um, cancel out gamma and delta t and delta t primed. So I get one from all of that. So they all cancel out. So what I'm left with is delta x prime over delta t prime plus v over one plus v squared over v over c squared delta x prime over delta t prime. And that should should cause us to celebrate a little bit because we also said that we're going to let u primed and the x direction be delta x primed over delta t primed. So if we know that, we can say, oh, well, we can simplify this and clean this up a whole, whole lot better by instead of saying delta x primed over delta t primed, which is a lot to say, admittedly, you just say u primed x, u prime sub x. So that would, so that looks, this looks, so then this result becomes a little bit um, cleaner. You've got u sub x equals um, u prime x plus v all over 1 plus v u, u prime x over c squared. The nice thing is all of the units cancel out so that we are left with units of meters per second. So that's A-OK. -okay. And of course, we did the same thing on the, um, delt, on the u prime x side because, you know, obviously we want to make sure we have both of those results. So I'm going to skip through all of the work to get to the result. So we get uh, u prime x equals u, u sub x minus v all over 1 minus v u sub x over c squared. So they look kind of similar, but these two results are going to be very important, especially when we do um, problems where two objects are moving either towards each other or away or with each other or away from each other at percentages of the speed of light that could lead to some violations of special relativity. So we want to make sure we we take care of those things and using the correct um, formulations for all of this. So that's where that comes from, from in the x direction. Of course, in the y direction, not much has changed, but it's important to see where that change occurs so that we can at least be prepared for, um, for it in case maybe our um, reference frame is not moving just in the x direction, maybe it's moving in the y direction. So in that case, um, u sub y is going to be delta y over delta t. So y and, you know, and so y and y primed are the same thing. So what we get is that it's going to be u sub y over, over 1 plus v u sub, u sub um, u prime x over c squared. Now you might say, wait, 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 what happened here? Why is that there the u primed of x in, this, in the denominator here? Why, is it, why, isn't it, um, why isn't it going to be like u, 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 u uh, sub y? And the answer is because this delta t is what we, de what we determined over here um, a little bit earlier. This delta t um, was something that we determined over here, which had the x direction um, put into it. So it's something to think about. And so what happens here is that your, your x direction does matter a little bit. But fortunately for you, it doesn't actually change the res um, It just changes the magnitude of how, how the y direction gets affected by the, by the relativistic transformation or this Lorentz transformation. It doesn't actually affect the units because otherwise that, you know, that would be, that would be a problem. So we do, the same, we do the same kind of transformation in the y direction um, as well as the, you know, with not just the u, u sub y, but u, u primed of y. We get our same results over here. And then u sub z, I figure you can look at that on your own because that is the same, the same uh, mechanics as u sub y. So these two results are the same as these two results. So now we've got um, u primed of x, u of x, u, u of y, u primed of y, u of z, and u primed of z. These are the Lorentz transformations. So in the next few videos, I'm going to be working on how we got these, um, the x and the t. Um, x function and the t function, as well as maybe an example to help you guys in, out in figuring out how all of this um, connects to certain relativistic problems that m you might encounter later on. So good luck in your studies. May the force be with you.